morning welcome back to the channel and welcome to a ford f-250 video whether you like it or not i'm having a lot of fun with this thing and i know it's out of the traditional scope of my video content but i've had this thing since february and so roughly six months now and i've really had a lot of fun with it and there's much more to come i'm realizing now i don't know why it took me so long to get a full full-blown truck because there are so many reasons why I, this has come in handy already I want to walk you through a few checklist items that are next on the list so uh, the truck today is going to my friends down at Apex Wetworks you're very familiar with this skilled team of professionals Isaac and his crew down there have painted a number of cars for me uh, full restorations obviously this one does not need that extensive of body work however there are a few things going to, I'm going to have them fine tune for me. Um, installation of a couple parts that have come in really just to take this truck to the next level from a show readiness perspective. So let's walk around it. I'll show you what I'm going to have those guys work on and we'll go from there. So I'll kind of take things from front to back. That's the easiest way to discuss the next steps here. The truck came from West, uh, Eastern Washington rather. So it was a pretty well preserved truck in terms of the paint condition. There's not really much to worry about there as far as the brilliant blue paint, but I am going to have Apex put in a fresh set of headlight housings here on the front end just to kind of freshen that up. And then the other thing, uh, this was kind of controversial in the comments before, but over here there was a 4x4 badge underneath the driver headlight. And many, many people agreed that is a factory thing. However, I was only able to find that feature on the 8th gen trucks from 1987 to 1991. I don't believe it was a thing on the 9th gen trucks from 92 to 96. So either way, uh, I wanted to clean up the front end. Uh, the badge came off easily, but there are two little holes here that I'll have them weld. And then ha this has a little paint chip on it anyway. So luckily that is just one separate piece that they can remove here and repaint that to match that also up here if you remember the early days early videos this truck had some fog lamps that were aftermarket mounted here underneath the front bumper so the mounts are still there i wasn't able to access those with the tool set that i have available to me so i'm going to see if apex can access that from the back side to just get rid of those mounts as well as the dash switch that's still connected here. This is the switch for the fog lights that are no longer there. So that will clean that up. The next thing has to do with these door sills. So this truck had side steps uh, on under either door sill because it is a higher uh, sort of clearance vehicle. It's kind of a pain to get into. However, I wasn't a fan of the kind of design of those. Unfortunately, when I removed them, there's some remaining uh, issues to deal with on this sill here. They were drilled through. And even though there's a solution that they offer where you can put a stainless steel or aluminum plate over this, I'm going to actually have these holes welded on both sides, have this section here repainted in the blue, maybe put a clear film on it to protect it, and then have that sort of factory look to it. The next thing is side moldings. So I'll show you up close and personal, but this truck has uh, maybe had sat in the sun on this particular side for longer than the other side, but there's some issues here. This center piece on the molding is actually supposed to be shiny. You can see here, I'll get you a better view of it. It's supposed, to, it's kind of flaking off. So these are kind of wrapped up in a sock right now, but this is how they come and they basically just attach with a double-sided tape. So I'm going to let Apex play around with that. The driver's side isn't so bad, more so just the passenger side here. There you can kind of see what I was talking about with the issue on the delamination there. This next one's kind of a big undertaking. So this truck had a toolbox back here, a diamond plate aluminum toolbox, as well as a drop-in bed liner that I'm grateful for because it did protect the bed from 30 plus years of wear and tear. However, the toolbox used some mounting points here that needed holes drilled in the top of the bed cap here or the bed rail. So when I took the aluminum covers off here, it left those holes in it. So 
The plan ultimately, by the way, is to do a spray and bed liner and they can actually go over the rail here. So I will do that, but I want the holes filled before taking it to get the spray and bed liner. So uh, this side's not particularly bad, but this one, same thing, the bed liner will come over to cover up this blemish area here. And then on the driver's side, this is really buggered up right here. So I'm gonna have Apex clean those up. Maybe they can just prime this section. And then when I take it for line X and undercoating, it'll be a clean surface to start with. And while we're on that topic, uh, you can notice here in the bed, this is a huge cavernous eight foot long bed. I love this thing. But the, the driver's side wheel well, for whatever reason, you can kind of barely see in the lighting here, has a good size dent in it right there. So again, before I do the bed liner, I want this to be a clean and fresh looking surface. This one looks perfect. So uh, body work first, and then I'll take it to have the uh, next phase of the bed liner installation. Back here in the rear end, there, things are pretty simple. Uh, I did buy a couple of new aftermarket taillights. It's tough to see the difference probably on camera, but there's a distinct improvement when going with these. So they're also inexpensive too. So even if they you know, partic don't particularly hold up that well, uh, they'll at least look nice in the short term. And then one kind of awkward thing, I lost the F in Ford <laughs> somewhere on a freeway here in the Phoenix area. So luckily I found a organization called Jeff's, I think it was called Jeff's Bronco Graveyard or something like that. But these are made by uh, Dennis Carpenter and it's a Ford letter set. This was like 39 bucks shipped and it, they're aftermarket, but it came with all four and they're super nice. So I'm going to wait until after all the paint work and stuff is completed to install these, but i um, excited to have those and maybe reinforce them with some extra adhesive or something so I don't have to drive an Ord anytime in the near future. There's a closer look at the lettering. You can see it's just a little bit oxidized here and if I put a fresh F on there it's going to make everything else look bad. So when this truck is uh, ready for that phase I'll peel these off reattach the new ones and be good to go. I might also see if there's a way to, clearly someone's already worked on this. It needs like a little bit more adhesive to hold that panel in. And there's a look at the tail light. This, this could probably be polished quite a bit, but I just wanna go with those aftermarket ones for now. Another item that's gonna be sort of a final phase project is installing these wheel covers or hub covers in the back. Uh, these ones are actually Ford branded. The ones on the truck, I think, are just kind of aftermarket. But I lost this one on a random surface street near my place. I went back and found it, but it had been cracked. I'll show you the detail on it when I bring the camera up here. But they don't really plug on or, or clamp on too securely. There's a couple trim rings here, similar to some of the Honda Acura cars I've dealt with. But it's a made-in-China part, you know, even though it's Ford branded. So we'll see how long they last. But uh, I did get this one to stay on for now even though it's cracked but when the truck is kind of on that last restoration step i will install these fresh ones there's a look at the cracked section i was telling you about but i was able to get it reinstalled there for now i do love these they call the uh, Al alcoa alcoa wheels they're uh, polished aluminum they probably could use a good fresh coat of polish but for right now they're pretty nice and then obviously in a recent video, I had the BFG tires installed. These are the KO2s, uh, all-terrain TA. I really love these tires, especially with the white letter look. Another item for this next phase is gonna be a removal of some adhesive here. So this truck had aftermarket smoked plastic window visors on these windows, and I was able to peel them off really easy. In fact, they were so brittle, they basically cracked themselves off as I was doing it, but it did leave a fair amount of this remaining gunk that I think I could get to it with like some goof off or um, lacquer thinner or something. But I know that Apex is going to have access to some more tools for that, like eraser wheels and stuff. So Isaac said the guys could could uh, clean this up for me as long as the truck's in there anyway. And here's a closer look at how that looks right now. Like you can see, I did clean up certain sections of it, but it's just kind of a pain in the butt to, to pick away at. 
last but not least, this may or may not be something those guys can solve for, but I noticed that the license plate lights aren't working, so it could be something as simple as a bulb or otherwise maybe a wiring uh, consideration. I do know that the truck was used to tow a fair amount in its lifetime because there are pictures from the prior owner with his boat. And obviously we have uh, the lighting harness here underneath the back bumper. So I'm not gonna tamper too much with that myself. I'll see if those guys wanna take a quick look at it and check into it. But for right now, I think that's gonna do it. That's the truck. So I'm excited to get this thing to the next level. I'm planning on taking this to Radwood, most likely in Southern California. I want to say it's slated for early November. It's going to be a long drive in this big rig and I'm sure it's not going to do great on gas, but hey, I got two tanks. So we'll let you know how it goes. where all the magic happens. These guys are awesome. Here's a little special surprise that you didn't know you were getting in this video, but this is more for Andrew. Now, uh, caution or uh, what is this called? Graphic content, I guess we could call it because the car's definitely not looking presentable and I'm sure they aren't loving the fact that I'm recording it midway through, but I do want to show Andrew the progress on his 93 LS Coupe 6-speed. This is a very rare black-on-black -black manual uh, with about 100 and... I can't quite read that. Less than 120,000 miles, but it had been previously repainted, but they're kind of just going after it with the more fine-tooth approach. These guys obviously are very detail-oriented, and this is probably the fifth or sixth legend they've torn down, so they could do this in their sleep. And if you guys have seen my previous restorations, you know this is a very uh, comfortable opportunity for them. Instead of catching a traditional Uber home, I'm gonna take a self-driving Jag I-Pace. This is one of the Waymo cars. I've talked about it on the video before, but basically just unlock it with the app. I'm gonna have to stop filming to do this. Hey. So yeah, anyway, this is the experience. It's uh, about the same price as a traditional Uber. They've been expanding the service area a lot in Phoenix. And it's been a pretty solid experience every time I've taken it. This is probably the 20th or so time. It's always a fun sort of uh, novelty to do with family when they're visiting. My sister-in-law describes it as being sort of like you're in a Disneyland ride. You have virtually no control over what's going on up there. And you can sit in the passenger front seat, but you definitely don't want to reach over and uh, interfere with anything that's going on over there on the left-hand side. Pretty trippy. Definitely wasn't sure if or when I would ever see this day, but here we are. It'll navigate traffic, pedestrians, construction zones, you name it. Of course, there are some controls here on this back panel. You can play around with the audio settings pause that for a second and you can call for support if you do have an issue 
about other stuff in this menu, temperature, map view, music, about the car, and so on. So 22 minutes till I get to my house. And looks like, yeah, it just made it through this construction zone. It's probably rerouting because of that congestion up there. Kind of a cool opportunity though to just sit back and relax and of course one of the main grievances that some people have with traditional Ubers and Lyft rides is that you have to have small talk convo with your driver. Not everybody's into that. On top of that, uh, you don't have any expectation of tipping here because I don't know who you would tip. It's, it's all robot. Speed limit here, by the way, is 30 and it is tracking right on the money. That is it. Ride complete. And the door handles go back in and off it goes with nobody in there. Pretty wild.